right so so these are the three modes which are defined in fracture mechanics to classify the combined effect of the crack geometry and the loading direction and the type of deformation it will create opening or tensile mode sliding mode and tearing mode and then we were here that if we are at the crack tip then the stress at the crack tip is this force divided by the surface area of only the crack so this is a very high stress now right so at the crack tip the surface is very high as you go away from the crack tip it decreases it decreases more area here more area here so at the crack tip the ten, the stress is very high as you go away from the crack tip distance from the crack tip it keeps on going down after some time it becomes the average nominal stress because until some distance from the crack tip its effect is there but if you are far away from it here or on that side or on this side then the stress is the f divided by capital a the normal stress right so this is the basis of understanding of all the fracture mechanics things in the future that any nominal or average stress on a part is the applied force divided by the average surface area which is perpendicular to it but near a flaw near a crack the stress is the applied force divided by the very small crack surface area and therefore it is very high but as we move away from the crack tip the stress value keeps on decreasing until it becomes the same as the nominal stress so this is the basis of all our future studies so if we look at the same thing if we look at the same thing either we define an edge crack or a center crack the only difference is that it its length is 2a its length is half of that it's only a right now the crack geometry the crack geometry could be elliptical could be a sharp straight line could be circular and so on so very briefly we will discuss this later on but griffith was a scientist who was the founder of fracture mechanics in one way he was studying the crack so this type of crack we call a griffith crack and we are assuming that it is circular in nature so the sigma m is 2 sigma not a upon rho t raised to half or under root of this and right so take out sigma not from here so the rest two times this is the kt now rho t rho is r rho t is radius of curvature radius of curvature here radius of curvature sigma not is the applied stress the f upon capital a and sigma m is the maximum stress at the crack tip according to griffith these symbols can change later on so here we are saying that the normal applied stress or the nominal stress is sigma not and the maximum stress because of stress concentration at the crack tip is sigma m in this equation so you multiply sigma not by a stress concentration factor just like you used to do in your machine design course so that is it you multiply the nominal average stress by a stress concentration factor and you get the very high stress at the crack tip okay and the derivation we are not talking about right now but this a is the half crack length if it is a full crack then a is the half crack length if it is an edge crack then it is the crack length and rho t is the radius of curvature of that crack area so here we are showing you another view another view that this is suppose this is suppose the crack so whether we are at this tip or whether we are at this tip the stress is highest and when we go away from the tip then the stress keeps on decreasing until it becomes the nominal stress so stress at the crack tip is maximum then when you increase the distance from the crack tip it goes down and down until it becomes sigma not so if it was an edge crack we are seeing only one side of it if it is a full crack center crack then the same thing is happening 
from this edge of the crack and from that edge of the crack. So these are mirror images of the two and this you understand. Here I am showing you something like more from your machine design course that you see there is a part, mechanical part, which has a sharp change in diameter or uh, dimension, right? So of course, this could be a very sharp 90 degree angle, but you know that if it is a sharp 90 degree angle, then the stress concentration is much higher. So it is a good uh, engineering practice to always make a fillet, make it rounded. So it is safer also, it is not sharp anymore and the stresses will be a little reduced. So if this W is the width of that region and if this H is the width of this small region, right? Then you know these are from your machine design book and so on. Here you have the values of the stress concentration factor, KT, right? It is simply sigma max upon sigma naught. Remember last time when we were defining in the previous slide, then we were saying that sigma max or sigma M is kt multiplied by sigma naught. So, a stress concentration factor is just a ratio of maximum to nominal, right? And here, fillet radius, fillet radius 0.5, fillet radius 1. So, if you see, if the fillet radius is a small, then there will be higher, right? If higher and w by h, w by h, right? If this is bigger compared to this, then this is one thing and r by h right radius so if you see that for sharp fillet radius we are here on the same graph when the fillet radius increases we are here when the so so if the crack is very sharp the concentration factor will be high if the crack is less sharp then like this if the crack is very blunt then like this so a stress concentration which is there because of the flaw or the crack depends on the sharpness of the crack. If the crack is very sharp, obviously the stress will be very high. If the crack has some fillet radius, then the sharpness will be low and the stress concentration will go down, right? So, so this is like from your machine design, uh, machine design uh, course. So once again, now we are now starting crack propagation. How does the crack travel and become larger, right? Now, ideally, for mathematical purpose, this is a very sharp crack. But in reality, there is a small radius here. Why is it there? If we assume that the material is perfectly brittle, what is a perfectly brittle material? We are not talking whether it is a strong or weak, right? It can break at a low load it is weak, it can break at a very high load, it is a strong. So we are not talking of a strong or weak. We are saying brittle. We apply load, apply load, apply load, the stress, stress curve is a straight line, a straight line, a straight line, a straight line. And at some load, very high or medium or low, the straight line finishes and suddenly the material breaks. So if the material breaks and the stress strain curve remains perfectly straight line, then it is a perfectly brittle material. But at the, at the end, towards the end, if it has a small curve, right, it deforms a little, then there is partial plastic deformation. So this is what we are showing you here. This is perfectly brittle. This is a small plastic deformation is there. This, this colored region, a small plastic deformation is there, right? So, a plastic material, plastic material deforms at the tip, blunting the crack. If it is a perfectly brittle material, the sharp is very, uh, the crack is very sharp. If it is a plastic material, which has some ductility, then a blunting of the crack, this rounding off is there. Now, if you perform energy balance on the crack, if you perform energy balance on the crack, which Griffith and their group did, elastic strain energy, right? Elastic, of course, means that we are in the straight line region. A strain energy is a strain energy that when you strain the material, when you apply the material and there is some strain, then how much energy has been applied it on it or how much energy has created that strain, right? So energy is stored in the material 
as it is elastically deformed. This energy is released when the crack propagates and creation of new surfaces requires energy. So try to understand it. Right? Now there is a crack. There is a crack. This crack is there. And we are trying to load this. We are applying some stress on this. We are trying to load this. The crack remains the same. The crack remains the same. The crack remains the same. After a certain amount of load, this increases in size. So this means that some new crack surface has been uh, created. So earlier when we were applying load and applying load and applying load, the internal energy stored energy of the material was increasing. When this internal stored energy became more than the resistance of the material, then the crack started to enlarge. So that stored energy changed the crack geometry by enlarging its crack and that energy is now released. But this work now has been done and the crack has been enlarged. So this is how it always happens. You apply the force, some internal energy of the material is increasing until nothing happens. There is more and more stored internal energy. But as soon as a crack is formed or a pre-existing crack has enlarged, then this energy is released and this energy is converted into the new uh, crack surface. So, right. So that is how it always is. So now, when does a crack propagate? When does a crack propagate? The crack propagates if it is above the critical stress, right? Critical stress. So the stress, stress at the end of the sharp crack is more than some value or the stress concentration factor is more than some critical stress stress content. So this is how it is, right? Always remember the, don't look here now, look here only, look here only. That this is the stress that we theoretically find at the end of the crack tip. Now the material has some critical value. If this stress at the crack tip is larger than this critical value, the crack will start to grow. In other words, because this is also multiplied by sigma naught, this is also multiplied by sigma naught, isn't it? So if you remove that sigma, sigma naught from this side and this side, then it means that the stress concentration factor for that crack is more than some critical value of the stress concentration factor. So any of these two things satisfies, then the crack will start to grow. So what is the value of this? So again, we are not telling you the derivation for now, but this is 2 E is the Young's modulus. Gamma S we will know is the specific surface energy, the energy required to create the new crack surface. Pi is pi, A is the half crack length and this is the under root of the whole thing, right? Now this is great that this gamma S, the specific surface energy is a property of the material the property of the material. So, so right, so, so this is, this is it that this is now a major jump in your level of knowledge. Now this, this slide is not a revision of your previous courses. Under previous courses, stress concentration factor and so on was there. But now you are telling yourself for the first time that if the stress concentration factor is greater than a critical value of the stress concentration factor or the stress at the crack tip is greater than a critical value of stress, then a pre-existing crack will start to grow. And this is dependent on a material property, which is gamma S, the specific surface energy of the material.